What's going on guys? My name is Brandon and this week I had a welding video planned but it completely changed real quick. Let me bring you in and tell you about it. So the other day I posted on my Facebook page because I saw that a company called Rock Rooster was doing something with like a membership. It was like $59 and then you get a pair of $159 boots, three pairs of uh, socks, a $30 gift card, and a 20% off uh, discount. So that prompted me to write, basically kind of reshare it, and I wrote that I thought it was a great deal, and I've owned a pair of these Rock Rooster boots for a year. Well, this is where you guys will benefit from this. So apparently Rock Rooster saw that I posted that. They reached out to me, and they wanted to know if I wanted to do a giveaway on my YouTube channel. So guess what? Four pair of boots. So I'm going to be doing four pairs of boots for a giveaway for you guys. That's it. I'm going to select two winners off my YouTube channel and I'm gonna select two winners off my Facebook page and that's all there is to it let me show you the boots that they're gonna be giving away it's the same pair that I have that I wear every single day and here they are guys this is the pair of my boots that I've had like I said I bought these a year ago and I wear them every single day 12 hours a day they are super comfortable they're a steel toe boot I don't have all the spe specifics about this but this is the boot that you guys will be getting well not this boot but yes this style boot is what you'll be getting so like I say they're steel toe let's see what they say genuine leather upper synthetic lining uh, here is the specifications if you want to know about the boot it's gonna be real simple like I say they're just super comfortable I wear these guys more than I wear my sneakers well obviously look I'm wearing shorts my wife doesn't particularly like when I wear them like this but anyways this is <laughs> Guys, this is how I wear them. I, but you know what I really like? I like that they're side zip. So you tuck your foot in, just zip them up, boom, and you're in. And I actually take the laces and just once once I know where they're nice, I just tie them in a knot and leave them like that. So you want to take them off, zip them, boom, just like that. Yeah, like I said, my wife doesn't particularly care that I wear these with shorts, but I wear them everywhere. I wear, wear them everywhere, just like this, with shorts. And you know, guys, without you guys watching this channel, I would never be able to do this stuff. And I know that a lot of you guys that watch this channel are getting involved in welding, just starting out. A lot of you are home hobbyists. And, you know, I preach all the time in my welding videos about don't wear sneakers, don't wear open-toed shoes, make sure you wear boots or safety boots. And here's an opportunity, guys, for you guys to pick up a pair for free for nothing. You know what? This is what's awesome, guys, is that, you know, I shared my personal experience on my uh, Facebook page for Lund DIY Builds. Rock Rooster saw it, and in turn, they're, you know, obviously they want some exposure. It's going to work good for them. It's going to work good for me, and it's going to work good for you guys because I'm giving away four pair of boots. It's that simple. The rules are super simple. There's no catch to it. You don't have to buy anything. All you got to do in this video is just comment what state you're from. It's limited to the United States only. So if you want to be entered into win four pair of boots, all you got to do is put the state that you're from. I'm going to randomly select a winner and the drawing date will be the end of September by midnight, last day of September by midnight. I will select a winner and I will announce it on my YouTube page and I will announce it on my Facebook page and I'll announce it on Instagram. I'm gonna pick four people overall, two from this channel, two from Facebook. And if you're a winner, all you gotta do is DM Rock Rooster, tell them the size that, that your feet are and they'll send you out this pair of boots. It's that simple. That simple, guys. All you can do is DM them. That's it. Got to be from the United States. It's kind of like giving back because I preach to you guys all the time about how not to wear sneakers in the workshop. Make sure you have a pair of boots. Well, here it is, guys. Here's an opportunity to pick up a pair of boots that are going to work great for your welding hobby, your welding career, or whatever. So, And it feels good to me to be able to reach this point on the channel that I can actually give back to you guys. So, Pretty cool, huh? I need a material stop or a material lift look how this piece right here I, I do this constantly guys it's like it drives me insane and I just keep forgetting about it and moving on so I can uh, do the next project that's coming up but I'm finally gonna say to heck with it and I'm gonna commit to it and I'm gonna build a material lift so I need to put a lift under here because you can see how my material spans watch what happens when I undo this 
you'll see it's just going to drop down. See, so I need to be able to raise the material up and I need to be able to slide it back and forth here so that it doesn't move my uh, material lift up. And I always like to put my chop saw here on my cut on my table, on my fab table, right on the end, just like this. So that way I've got all my work in here. I got all my clamps. I usually have either my welder here or you know the cart pulled up so it's kind of close with all my consumables. And it's kind of just, everything is kind of like nested all around me that I need with all my tools and everything else, so. We're gonna build something real quick today because it needs to get done and I've been meaning to do it for a while, so let's get going. I know some of you guys mentioned that, you know, it's been a couple weeks since I uploaded something. Well, I wanted to share some with you. I've been kind of busy, guys, so do you recognize this guy on the cover of the magazine? Well, I was reached out to by FF Journal, which is a national publication for metal fabrication and technology, and they reached out to me and wanted to do an article on me. So I owe it to you guys. I would not be doing these things and being able to give away boots and all this other stuff if you guys didn't put me in this position. So I want to thank you guys. Um, your interest in the channel and on Facebook and on Instagram and all the support that you guys have given me has caused me to be able to do these things and that's you know if I can get an opportunity to give back uh, something that I actually believe in you know like these rock rooster boots I'm not just advertising them I believe in them I've been wearing them for over a year uh, they've reached out to me and because of stuff like this I've been given you know four pairs and I can pass it on to you guys let's get back to our build it's enough mushiness so let's get back to the build let's get going so my material lift needs to be it looks to be right about an inch and seven eighths maybe two inches I'm gonna see if I can put a piece of uh, Maybe if I got a long piece of straight edge bar, that'd be even better. So that way there's no curvature that's going into it. And this is going to be a flex core welding project. Why is it going to be a flex core welding project? <laughs> because that was what I was set up with on my last project, and that's what I'm going to use. So I will tell you that next week's episode is going to be a TIG welding project. And I can tell you that you're never, ever, ever probably going to find another TIG welding video like this again. It's going to be super unorthodox. It's going to be, I've had a lot of suggestions for it. I've never heard of it, and I don't know how it's going to pan out, but it's going to be pretty cool. We're going to be using some filler metal that is probably not anything I would ever grab, but a lot of people said it works, so we'll find out. All right, so I've got some one-inch tube, so we'll make it uh, two inches tall and probably, I don't know, a foot, foot long maybe? I'm just kind of winging it as we go. Another thing, it's kind of fun to, let's go 16 inches. We'll go 16 inches wide. That way your material can move all around, you can angle it. This came off from a frame build that I did for a leaf bagger. We built the whole frame and this is the leftover uh, junk metal that we cut out of it. I'll put a link to that. It's always kind of neat. I like it anyways, referencing where I get some of my materials and what it was prior used for, just like my fire pit build. It kind of adds like a, kind of like a sentimental value. So last week we just built a fire pit and someone commented that the rim <laughs> was disconnect, uh, discontinued back in the 70s. Well, I was born in the 70s. So that rim for that fire pit build, and I'll put a link up above, uh, was discontinued right about the time I was born. So uh, yeah, so it's definitely seen its day. So anyways, we're going to use our Evolution chop saw. If you haven't seen uh, this saw in action, I'm sure you probably have. This thing is incredible. I highly recommend it and I have links um, down below in the video description to discounts off all a lot of these things that you see me using. So it doesn't cost you anymore. The channel gets a little bump if you buy something using that link, which is kind of nice, you know, helps support the channel. So and it allows me to keep doing these types of builds. So if this is anything that you're interested in, you check out those links down below. Like I say, they do help the channel a little bit. and. Uh, yeah, it's kind of nice. These saws are super loud, so you want to have uh, ear protection on. You definitely want eye protection. But the great thing about these is that they make a burr-free cut. And they make no sparks, so you don't got to worry about burning your shop down. They just make chips. So we'll start out by squaring up this edge first right here. Then 
will make it, I guess, 16. Is this 32? Let's make it 12. I don't know if it needs to be 16 inches. Ah, we'll do 16. What the heck? Now, a lot of stuff that you do, guys, you can kind of get out of measuring and make things a lot quicker just by, you know, lining up stuff. Put a little, you know, use your prior pieces. Of... That's that. And we got that little piece on there. So, you know what? To fix that, I'm going to make it 15. <laughs> 15 inches, yep. Alright. So, we'll save some time and we'll cut both of them at the same time. This is how they're going to kind of go together, guys. I'm just going to tack these two together to make up that two inch uh, gap. And then, as I'm sliding my material through, I need to make sure that that doesn't knock that off the table. So, I'm actually going to take a piece of strap and pin it right to the uh, table using one of these uh, fixture stops. So, that'll be a handy little addition. So, let's say here. So we'll cut this off here, then we'll radius that edge, then we'll bore a hole in it. This should work pretty slick. Now I'll put a little radius on it. Just using a flat washer as a template. Just like that. We'll bring that over the bandsaw, get rid of the majority of it, and then grind the rest into it. Here's another cool tool, guys, that uh, that I built not too long ago. I really like it. Uh, it did take a lot of time or money. Not a lot of, it's all pretty much all scrap. So I'll have a link up above if you want to see how I built this, but it's a, just using a portable bandsaw. This one's a Milwaukee one. And then it's just got a switch down here to turn it on, turn it off. Pretty simple. One clamp underneath takes the whole saw right off and you can use it just like it was intended. It only takes a second. That got the rough shape just so I can uh, grind less at the grinder and not put dust in the air. Now we'll come over to my 150 pound grinder. That's all filled with sand in that base to help uh, dampen vibration. That's an old truck wheel or truck drum and then I filled that piece of pipe all the way up with sand to help keep the vibration down. This grinder is pretty awesome. This is just a Harbor Freight grinder, but uh, it doesn't vibrate or wobble just because of all that weight. And I'll have a build video for you for that as well. Now we'll just uh, put on our arbor to accept annular cutters in the uh, drill press stand that I built. This is a real handy tool. I use this all the time, guys. I've really wanted for a long time, uh, for you guys that watched this build video, for a long time I really wanted a nice drill press that could take annular cutters and was able to take drill bits. Uh, but I don't have a whole lot of use. Uh, so this is the Jacobs truck that comes out. But I don't have a whole lot of use for a mag drill. I occasionally do, uh, but not every day. So this kind of like serves the best of both worlds. This is my mag drill that's also a drill press. So all I got to do is just remove this little safety strap and I literally can just pick this up and walk away with it. It's that easy. We'll put in a 5 8 annular cutter. And let's see, right here. 
this this is the cutter that I I drilled all the holes in that fabrication table with. They just take a standard 5 8 uh, bit. And then this simply goes up in like this. It's that easy. I've got the part clamped down in my drill vise and I got my drill vise clamped down to the base of the drill. So that looks pretty close to centered. I just eyeballed it. So all we do is raise it up a little bit, turn on the switch right here. And that's it guys, it's that easy. This thing bores through that like no problem at all. Check that out. Burr free. Just because it's cutting on the perimeter, it kind of basically works like a hole saw. It's basically what an annual cutter is. It's like a hole saw. Same idea. Just a lot stronger. Alright, let's see how that looks. Oh yeah. Pretty slick. That's perfect. That's all we need right there. You know, you want to make it so that you can easily insert one of those stops down through it. So I'm just going to use a chamfering bit and just chamfer that hole a little bit. And that's the same thing I did with all the holes on this table too. See that guys, it tapers it just enough so that one of these shoulder bolts fits down there real easy. So, just like that. These two pieces will be welded together, which we're going to do next. This will be well, this piece of flat bar will be welded to this. And then we drop it to that. And that'll keep this from sliding off the table when you go to push your material stock around. Pretty slick, huh? Simple, effective. All right, so now I'm just going to grind off these edges where I'm going to end up welding it. Okay, we're ready to at least get these welded out. I'll do, you know, just short weld. I'm not going to go the whole way. I just do, you know, probably an inch, an inch, flip it over an inch and an inch, and then we'll weld this to it. And then we can actually hang it up by this when we're not using it. You'll find, like, when you have one of these fabrication tables that you'll be building little pieces and trinkets for it that just make work so much easier. Kind of like this. All this is is just a piece of an old bed rail with a piece of... Uh, flat plate welded on top of it and that allows you when you're welding round stock to set this over your round stock and then use one of your fixture clamps and clamp it right down so that just allows the fixture pad to sit flat on that surface while it grabs a round surface so yeah just makes your life a little bit easier in order to set up a welder we actually got to know what it is welding for material thickness so right there says we are at 16 gauge so we're going to set our welder up for 16 gauge so like i said earlier guys we're going to be using the harbor freight welder it's this is a flux core only welder and this welder was donated to the channel by a channel fan uh, if you regular viewers you'll know i'll put a link to that video up above but this is a really good entry level machine for you guys starting out and I recommend you run Lincoln Wire in this machine. We'll do some tests with some other machines, but the Lincoln Wire, out of all the wires we've run when we did a head-to-head -head showdown, and I'll put a link to that video as well of all the different wires we ran through this machine, and the Lincoln came out on top. So, says steel, flex core, uh, 16, 18 gauge minimum. So we're using 30 thousandths wire. So we want to have 1.5 on the setting for wire feed speed and minimum on the amp setting which is the switch on the front so we're going to go to minimum and then 1.5 which is right there 
and that'll be a good starting point for us. I've talked to you guys at length before in numerous other videos about these Harbor Freight or these budget welders. This is one of the welders that I started out on you know, 35, 40 years ago, roughly. And uh, these are great entry-level welders, and you can build a ton of stuff with these. You can build trailers, you can build all kinds of things that I've all built. I've built tandem axle car haulers with stuff like this. And then as you progress and you enjoy it and you like it, just like anything else, you're gonna wanna upgrade. You're gonna want more features. Buy bigger, buy better, buy more powerful, more features, uh, more processes, and then eventually, you know, you can work your way up to stuff like this. Now, these are like the Rolls Royce, Ferrari, Cadillac of welders. These are all Fronius products. I absolutely love them, but you don't need them, guys. Uh, as I've said in other welders, welding videos, that if you took a guy that used this for a week straight and he welded with it, and then you took that same guy and put him on that machine right there and said, you only get one shot to do one bead, the guy welding with this is going to do better than that because a lot of times with welding it's seat time how much practice do you have on that machine every machine's a little different but with that being said that machine overall does everything better than this machine can do it so it's just it is what it is but don't think that because you have this machine here that you can't get stuff done and you can't do it you absolutely can all right so now we got a welder set up uh, this is a 120 volt only We'll plug it in and get to welding. All right, definitely I need to go with a higher speed. So let's do two. Actually, I need to go a little bit higher. Go three. Again, those settings that they put inside the cover, guys, those are all recommended. You're going to want to dial them in what feels best to you. There. That's all you need, just some short tacks on it. Now we'll do the middle and get that sorted out. So now we just need to grind back a little bit where center is, right where that little strap is going to come off that center piece. Turn it up a little bit, like five. Now, when I was welding that, guys, I was really focusing the heat onto the bar rather than onto the tube because the bar is thicker than the tube, so I was kind of focusing my heat more here and then just kind of like pushing it towards that so I didn't end up blowing out that bar. We'll flip it over, we'll do the back side real quick. Let's clean it up a little bit and uh, throw a coat of paint on it, we'll give her a try. All right, here it is all painted up with just a quick coat of black paint. I didn't get too fancy because it's all going to scratch off anyways. But like I say, sometimes the simplest of ideas work out to be the best to save you time in the shop. So all you do, line that up, take your shoulder bolt, drop it through. And you can see how this is free to kind of like move all around as it wants to. But when you slide your material down, it can't slide off the table or this way. And that makes it nice and flat all the way across, check it out. See how that supports that end, nice. And it has the ability to slide around if it needs to, or if the saw is over here, or whatever. Uh, makes it simple, and you can hang it up on that right there. So now our material is nice and flat, and I don't have to worry about 
that material stand sliding off the edge of the table because this pin holds it in. You can see how the material clears that. Just like that. And when you're done, pull the pin, you can hang it up on the wall. And there it is. And that's all there is to it, guys. Not every project is like a wow factor, blow your socks off type thing. Sometimes some of the best projects are some of the simplest that make your time in the shop that much easier. These types of projects are awesome, especially for you guys just starting out because you guys can hone your skills with different tools, trying out different processes, uh, seeing how, you know, how the machine runs on different thickness materials. It's all a learning experience and it's all fun, especially if you're doing it for you and it's to make your life better in the workshop. So be sure down in the description, put the state that you're from. You have to be from the United States if you want to be entered in on this drawing. The official rules will be over on my Facebook page. I'll have links to that down below as well. No purchase necessary. This is to give back to you guys that support me on this channel and I can't wait to give away four pairs of these boots to four lucky viewers. New videos every Friday. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care. Stay safe. Please like, comment, subscribe. See ya.